How's it going guys, I'm Josh, and today we are covering composition in photography. Now, composition is what's gonna take your photos to the next level. No matter how beautiful your subject matter is or how Instagrammable your location is, without proper composition, you are blowing it. So today we're gonna start with a quick description on what composition actually is, followed by 11 of my all-time favorite photo composition rules that you should be aware of, as well as tons of my photos to use as examples, plus tips on how you can actually put these photo composition rules into action for your photos. Starting out, what is composition? Simply put, composition is what your photo is made up of, what you choose to include and exclude in the frame, and how you manage to do so. Now, composition is not binary. It's not like long exposure photography, in which you either have it or you don't. It's something people are constantly working on, whether it's your first day shooting photos or you're a professional photographer, there is no proper way to compose a photo. Photography is an art form, and it's something that you'll be improving at until the day that you die or maybe even after, depending on how philosophical you wanna get. Now let's get in to my 11 favorite rules. Rule number one, perspective and vantage point. This is my subject. When I shot the photo, eye level standing up. Now this is the photo when I got super low. Note how much more awesome the subject looks. They're composed against the ceiling, which is a really cool backdrop. Now here's what you gotta know. This is your boring photographer's pose. Very standard angle. Here are the two angles you should get comfortable with immediately. Angle number one, get super, super high, and if you have a flip out LCD screen on your camera, you can actually position your camera like so to get it nice and high in the air, and as a result, the floor now becomes your backdrop. And the floor has tons of interesting compositional elements, lines, tons of cool stuff. And pose number two, get on the floor. You're gonna get some really, really awesome stuff when you're on the floor because everything looks taller and more dramatic. Additionally, always look for places in which you can get high up and shoot from down below or vice versa shooting straight up because it just is a totally different perspective on photography. A few more examples, by placing my camera super low in this field of wildflowers, it seems like you're in the field with us. In this photo, by getting just a little bit lower and crouching down on one knee, I was able to frame my friend James up against the white sky, which makes him pop so, so much more. So for the sake of framing, the sky is usually a really clean backdrop option. So when the background is busy, get low and get your subject super high. You can quote me on that, get your subject high for the sake of art. Rule number two, negative space. Give your subject some room to breathe. The natural assumption is you wanna fill your frame with just your subject, nice and zoomed in, which is good and sometimes, but sometimes you can actually zoom out a bunch more and have a very simple backdrop, which actually adds a nice dramatic effect and makes your subject feel a little bit more isolated and interesting. So for example, take this photo I shot of the town of Cornelia in Cinque Terre, Italy. And suddenly I zoom out a little bit and have the Mediterranean Sea in the top of the photo, which is really just an empty, almost fully white area. And it makes the photo look so much more dramatic and provides actually more emphasis on the town below. Now the best time to employ negative space photos is when you're taking a photo of a subject and you realize the area surrounding them is really simple and plain. And I think the subjects actually look a little bit more lonely when you have this massive empty backdrop. Another awesome way to simplify a photo and add some negative space is by doing silhouettes because suddenly whatever texture you have in the photo just becomes a shape. And rule number three, filling the frame. This is the exact opposite of negative space. This is when you take your subject and they pretty self-explanatory, just fill up the entire frame with their face or with the building or whatever you're shooting. This is my friend John Hill after eating a ghost pepper and nothing emphasizes tears like a good old close-up. Deciding when to impose either of these two rules really just depends on what your backdrop is. If you have something interesting and simple, then zoom out and see what you can do with it. However, if you have something crazy busy in the backdrop that you don't want featured in the photo, zooming in is a great way to cut all that out and provide the focus where you want it. And filling the frame is a very popular thing when you're doing portraiture. And rule number four is symmetry, which is pretty self-explanatory. The reason why it's so lovely is because it is balanced, it's simple, it's just overall easy on the eyes. Now a really popular way to get good symmetry in a photo is water. So if you're shooting a landscape photo, just getting a nice reflection that perfectly balances your subject and the reflection of your subject. Other things you can do if you're in a city or a suburb or anywhere and you see a big puddle of water. Now the trick to getting good reflections in a puddle of water is getting super, super low 
and really close up. And another little trick is if you're doing this near a street, watch out for coming cars because I have been splashed so hard shooting these photos in the past. You're also gonna find great symmetry in architecture. It's probably gonna be a horizontal reflection. And the trick to this is just being centered between the reflection points so that it's evenly balanced on both sides to give it the nice clean look you're gonna want. Rule number five, leading lines and diagonals. Now lines are a great way to actually guide your eye throughout the photo. And a well-composed photo is one that's easy to look at and digestible, where you can easily identify the subject. Now a leading line can actually take your eye and hold your hand, guiding you throughout the photo, showing you where to look. It's just a great way to add structure to a photo. Now, one of the most classic leading lines is the S curve, and this is one that just curves like an S, and it's pretty hard to find. You just have to keep an eye out for it, but when you can, it's this is perfect way of really guiding your eye throughout the entire photo, but you can find solid guiding lines just about anywhere. In the city, you'll find telephone poles, street wires, buildings, columns, anything like this. In nature, you've got trees, you've got trails, all kinds of stuff to take your eye throughout the photo. Now, two interesting things you can do with leading lines. One, you can actually create the line yourself by doing action sequence photos. And I have a whole tutorial link to that over here in which you have the subject stitched together to be their own line, which is awesome. Another fun thing you can do is have a leading line not be the main element of your photo, but actually just bringing your eye to the main element. I took this photo of my friend Rochelle and the line of the building just leads your eye right up to her. Other interesting lines to look out for are diagonals. Now this is when a bunch of lines actually intersect each other at different angles. So take for example, this photo of a painting man, all of these stark, interesting angles. Now two little tricks to getting good leading lines photos. One, you just have to keep an eye out for interesting lines, whether you're in nature or in the city, they just kind of present themselves to you. And as you get better at shooting them, you'll also get better at identifying them. And second, know that perspective, rule number one in this video, makes all the difference in finding good leading lines. Take for example, you're at a sidewalk. At ground level, that is just a flat plane from a rooftop that suddenly becomes a whole leading line. Just keep an eye out for these things at all times. And if you see what might be an interesting line, try walking around different angles to see how it changes until you can get that perfect, beautiful line. And here's another example of an S curve leading up to a biker who is then placed in a frame, which takes us to topic number six. Rule number six is framing. And some people call this frame within a frame because technically every photo is a photo frame. So when you have a frame within it, anyway, we're gonna call it framing. Framing is a great way to provide emphasis to your subject because it's a basically just a perfect outline for them. You can use doors, windows, and in this example, this is a frame within a frame within a frame, or you can get creative and make your own frame. A really popular one people like to do in nature is finding a branch with some leaves on it and shooting through those leaves. You can also shoot through trees, all kinds of options for finding a good frame. Now, some of these like leading lines are something you have to just kind of find and you have or you don't. Framing is awesome because you can impose it. You actually can get creative and find frames. So for example, my friend wanted to shoot this photo of him skating a bowl in Puerto Rico, and I went and explored this abandoned foundation and actually found this perfect little sniper hole to shoot my friend through. I'm sorry for the purposely aggressive language and created this very deliberate frame around him. If you have a cool subject, you can kind of just explore with them until you find the perfect frame to put them in. And sometimes frames are more subtle. You might not notice it at first, but the cross I purposely framed in between two trees because I knew that your eye would probably be drawn to that cross. Now this is again where perspective really comes into play. Let's try and frame up this AC remote in between my arm and my head. So if we have the AC remote right here, yeah, it's sort of in a frame. Now suddenly if we move it up closer to the camera, it's perfectly framed right there. So the closer or further away you move with your subject to the frame, the better or worse the frame becomes. So don't be afraid to experiment. Rule number seven is juxtaposition. And juxtaposition is all about pairing multiple elements together in a photo that either work together or contrast each other in one frame. And this is a huge thing in street photography. And I have a whole tutorial linked to that right over here that goes over this a little bit more, but just a couple quick examples. Take this photo I shot in London of a guy yawning. Now the guy yawning individually and this cool piece of street art, just kind of interesting. Yet suddenly when I waited an hour for this guy to walk through at the perfect time, right in that circle, that juxtaposition suddenly makes it a very strong photo. Another example, this is the Empire State Building framed up, another composition element within this dump setting. Another example, here's a photo of a tree. And here's a photo of my friend Nick. 
and suddenly you actually show you the full photo and this is Nick next to a baby tree and it's all about that contrast. And rule number eight, and this is probably the most common compositional rule in the game, that is the rule of thirds. Now, the rule of thirds is just the understanding that there are thirds, horizontal and vertical thirds in a photo, and that it's more aesthetically pleasing to have certain elements of your photo lined up with those thirds. Now, I'm not gonna get too into this. I actually have a whole video discussing the rule of thirds. Link to that right over here if you're curious, but there's a lot of potential to be done here, and it's a pretty fascinating topic, so definitely check that video out. And here's a candid photo I took of a bride on a subway. Now, quick little rule within a rule. There's this thing called the rule of space, and it's the idea that if you have a subject or any moving object that's looking or moving in one direction, then the extra space in the photo, if you're using the rule of thirds, should be in the direction that they're looking or moving. Rule nine, I'm actually combining a few rules into one. We're gonna call this the rule of corners and triangles. Now triangles are a beautiful, beautiful shape. They look really nice to see in photos. Additionally, when you have leading lines in a photo, it's really awesome when they line up with one of the corners in a photo. Or better yet, actually having it line up with two corners in your frame, or even better, three or all four corners. Now this is one of those rules you shouldn't go out of your way to follow. However, if you're taking a photo and you realize, oh, there's this line that's coming into my photo that is kind of near one of the corners, then try and reposition to get it perfectly lined up with one of the corners. And what you can do to do this is move in a little bit, move out a little bit, a little bit to the left, right, up, down, just sort of play around the camera until you can find that perfectly locked corner. Also, rotating the camera a little bit can really help. It's not gonna be easy to be perfectly precise, which is where cropping comes into play. You can then just crop your photo after you're editing in Lightroom or rotating a little bit just to make sure those corners perfectly aligned. Changing the crop ratio, that can really help you nail those corners in the perfect spot that you want them to be. Now a more professional compositional term you'll hear is the golden triangle, which looks like this. Now personally, I think that this is a load of crap actually deliberately using this. I'm sure there are professionals that do. However, what I recommend you do is focus on the rule of corners that I said, and this is gonna happen naturally, I guarantee it. Don't overthink it. And rule number 10 is balance. Now, balance in general is kind of the all-encompassing rule that involves the rule of thirds, framing, leading lines, all these things keep a photo balanced. But I wanna talk particularly about the balancing of elements. So if you have one very strong element over here, having something over here just to balance it out a little bit. So my two examples, one, take this kid flipping in one corner of the frame. Now I added this other kid in the opposite corner of the frame to balance it out. Another example, in Olympic National Park, I had this very tall, tall forest. So on the other side, I had this cool rock structure that just created this nice balance. Additionally, working with the symmetry of the reflection. Plus, there's also three nice corner lines. And rule number 11, one of my all-time favorite rules for street photography is contrast lighting. And what this is, is looking for areas of interesting shadows or areas of light baths, which is when everything's in shadows except for one specific area, and then putting your subject either in that light bath or on the line between the light bath and the shadows to then have interesting shadow play essentially in your photo. What's great about having bright areas and shadow dark areas in a photo is that it provides way more emphasis on your subject as well as just balance in terms of lightness and darkness. And for our last bonus rule, rules are dumb. These are not rules, these are guidelines. And there's that classic line about knowing the rules before you break them, and I really strongly believe in this for photography. Now, especially when you're first starting off, these rules are gonna help you get way, way more creative and give you a nice leveraging off point. So get to know the rules, try them out and get comfortable with them, and then you can really do your own thing, know when you wanna use them and know when you have to say forget them. Anyway, that is it. I hope you guys found this super helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe and give this a thumbs up for more content and just to help me out. Also, if you have any thoughts on more important rules, things I forgot to add, things that I suck at, leave a comment down below because they're fun to read. Also, if this video helped you, let me know because that's a huge reason why I like doing these photo videos. Also, if you liked my photos, all the examples were mine, of course, be sure to follow me on Instagram as well as check out my photography website, which has links to all of my photo tutorials as well as reviews on all my camera setup prints of my best shots, and more photos for you to check out. Link to that right over here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go eat some pretzels, so I will see you eventually.